science has made possible the technological advancements on which mankind relies. We trusted our best interests were held sacred in the name of progress. The blinders are now off as we watch all that we hold dear, sacrificed by special interests, seemingly blind, deaf, and dumb, to the catastrophic consequences of business as usual. Let's explore the science-based arguments for ending the destructive methods of the fossil fuel industry. This uh, September, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released a report saying that global climate change is happening and that it's unequivocal that it is being forced by human emissions of CO2 and greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. One of the potential alternatives to lessen climate change was the burning of methane or natural gas to uh, replace coal and other fossil fuels. As reserves of fossil fuels dwindle, the oil and gas industry has turned to fracking, a more dangerous and expensive extraction method that threatens our climate. Hydraulic fracturing, called fracking, is a way to access natural gas out of rock deep in the earth. Fossil fuel companies can frack anywhere, from wilderness to people's backyards. The process starts by drilling sometimes more than a mile deep to get to shale rock. Then fracking fluids are injected. This toxic cocktail requires millions of gallons of fresh water mixed with some over 600 chemicals, including known carcinogens, like lead, formaldehyde, and many more the fossil fuel industry won't disclose. Under high pressure, the rock fractures, sending the trapped methane gas back up the well. Most of the fracking fluid stays underground. The fluid that comes back up is either dumped into rivers, left in open pits that contaminate the air, or hauled away by big rigs. The toxic fracking fluid that stays underground becomes even more toxic over time, as it picks up radioactivity and other contaminants. Those fluids and gases can seep into aquifers, which provide irrigation for farming, and turns drinking water into a toxic mix. The industry conceals the exact amount of methane that escapes during fracking, but in North Dakota, where fracking is done primarily for oil, the methane is released and burned off in such great amounts that it's visible from space. Methane is a super pollutant. It is 86 times more disruptive to our climate than the carbon dioxide from coal-burning power plants. Air and water pollution from fracking leads to respiratory and nervous system problems and other diseases, including cancer. When you add up the climate disruption, air pollution, poisoned water, and the damage to our health from fracking, it's clear natural gas is just another dirty fossil fuel, and we should leave it in the ground. Three studies this year published in Science, Nature, and uh, a couple other journals uh, publishing similar studies have shown that the significant amount of methane leakage occurring in the natural gas system will pretty much do away with any potential good that is occurring from burning cleaner fossil fuels. So why should we be concerned about methane? The pipes are leaking methane. How much leaks is a critical technical question. So we go to the recent literature. We're going to see that shale gas is not the cleanest, not the least worst of all the fossil fuels. It's the dirtiest. It's the worst. So any transfer of using coal or oil to natural gas is going in the wrong direction. It's not helping climate change, it's making it worse. What you're seeing in this video in false color is the emission of large quantities of methane, natural gas, during the flowback period of a well that has just been hydraulically fractured. Everything that's yellow is methane, natural gas. As you can see, there's large quantities being emitted and those emissions occur over days. Hundreds of thousands of cubic feet of methane are being vented into the atmosphere to become a greenhouse gas, which over a short period of time is 100 times more potent than carbon dioxide as a climate change agent. We have a choice. If we choose business as usual, 
increasing the rate at which we're burning fossil fuels, the computer models say we're on that purple line. And it says we're going to get into a danger zone where we've changed the temperature by 2 degrees centigrade by about the year 2045. Additionally, the demand for that natural gas will increase worldwide, including in Europe, India, and China. And then, once the gas is in the pipeline, it goes for the highest price, not necessarily to the local consumer. It might be sent abroad through liquefied natural gas. Right now, we have one proposed liquefied natural gas plant in Maryland. We have other liquefied natural gas plants throughout the United States, including along the Gulf Coast. We know that there's been thousands of incidents of explosions throughout the United States, including hundreds of deaths. I use an EPA model to model an explosion in the Preston Forest neighborhood of Montgomery County. This model shows that the leakage of methane gas could extend over thousands of feet, including a blast radius of over 1,100 feet that could potentially level houses throughout the neighborhood. Since 1986, there have been over 8,000 pipeline incidents, resulting in more than 500 fatalities, 2,400 injuries, and over $7 billion in property damages. Next, I would say uh, air quality. Air quality through leakage of gas from the pipelines or from the compressor stations, of which we know at least one will be put in Roanoke County. And noise pollution. And then you have some of the societal impacts as well from having that large development in the region. So this is not just a global impact, this is a local and a regional impact to us. We live in a heavily forested, bucolic setting uh, in southwestern Virginia. We're looking at over 4,000 acres of land cleared, including some of the forests that we prize uh, living in kind of central Appalachia. Montgomery County is habitat for some globally rare and statewide rare species. These species exist in the headwater streams of the James, Roanoke, and New River systems that originate in Montgomery County. A charismatic species like the hellbender salamander. It's this large lizard-looking salamander that lays down on the beds of the headwater streams of the Roanoke, James, and New River. These species are sensitive to runoff caused from construction projects like the proposed pipeline, leading to sedimentation in the waterways and destruction of habitat for those species. Surface water and groundwater are highly interconnected around here. The surface water is continually leaving the surface and going down into the groundwater system. That's what Sinking Creek in Giles County is all about. People could get sick from contaminants in the, uh, in the groundwater. There are a number of fragile wetlands around here that are designated by the Department of uh, Conservation and Recreation of the Commonwealth of Virginia as very fragile places. Protection of our wetlands and streams is paramount, so I'm offering to landowners to come out and, and help you uh, with the site assessment and provide you a, a means to inform EQT and FERC that, hey, we, we're organized, we understand what our rights are under the Clean Water Act. Pipeline right-of-ways allow for the introduction of invasive species. Species like Japanese stiltgrass are often commonly brought into cleared forested areas from the construction of pipeline pathways and other utilities. These invasive species are often difficult to manage and result in large economic losses to states. When you think about it, some of those consequences are quite large and aren't necessarily something that you can just remedy. Some of those things need to be avoided or stopped before they even happen. So the geology cuts both ways and includes the seismic hazard uh, that could rupture the pipeline in this known active seismic zone just to the west of here in Giles County. Most people remember the, uh, the more recent one and the damage it did to the Washington Monument, to structures as far north as the mid-Atlantic north of Washington and Baltimore, and how we all were shaken by that. Uh, it could happen through slope stability issues. There are steep hillsides that the pipeline has to go across that are subject to downward movement just simply through gravity. 
but potentially uh, exaggerated and accelerated through, uh, through earthquake or seismic activity. The subsurface is karstic, and what that means is that the limestone that underlies the surface has been significantly differentially dissolved, which leads to large caves and caverns in the subsurface, and a very irregular bedrock surface upon which the soils are developed. That irregular bedrock surface uh, leads to the phenomenon of sinkholes. My colleague Andrew Foy at Radford University produced a model predicting the likelihood of sinkholes. And as you can see from this monitor right here, this map on the right, we have a high density of sinkholes throughout the Mount Tabor area into Catawba and Ellet Valley. This is the area where the proposed pipeline pathway will go through causing a potential break in the pipeline. If there were any kind of disturbance there, a sinkhole were to open up, allowing for a leak to occur. The Virginia Department of Conservation and Natural Resources has developed a list of the impacted caves and communities along the Mount Tabor, Ellet Valley, and Catawba Valley areas in Montgomery County. It will be more expensive to take into account a species of concern, a Karsten Cave community, and that will slow the company down. We can power the world with 100% clean energy. We don't need to fight over wind, sunlight, or water. Every country has the opportunity for energy independence and security. Using today's technologies, it is both economically and technically feasible to transform our energy sources entirely to wind, water, and solar in just two or three decades. If Germany can do it, and Denmark can do it, other countries and states can do it, we can do it. Corporation's not a person Corporation's not a person